Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. In this third part, um, I'm going to be talking about impellers and motors and the motors they put in the heads of our um, filters, such as like all the filters you buy, the heads are all in one piece and the impellers are in the heads of the filter. There's something I should bring up right now is when you um, buy a filter, the main expense of that filter is going to be the motor. The motor is the most costly thing going into that. And the reason is, is because the laminations that make up the motor are not proprietary to the company. They have to design a motor, then they have to have the laminations by a lamination company be stamped, and that costs money to pay for the laminations that go into the stator. Rotors are usually not proprietary because of the magnets, so they will specify how the motor is, and they built the motor inside the head. What this video is going to be about is basically how, as hobbyists, we're just basically getting ripped off when we buy canister filters. And the reason is... Because the head of the canister filter is the most expensive part of the filter to make, along with the motor, that's where they're going to cheap out. They're going to cheap out on the motor because that's where a lot of your cost will be. As much as two-thirds of the cost will be in that head. I saw a plastic cover for an Eheim 2217 just to buy the plastic cover for the head was $35. That did not include the motor. That was just the plastic cover for the head. So this is where most of the expense is going to be when you buy a filter. It's not going to be in the bells and whistles. It's not going to be with the automatic shutoffs that are built into the head. It's going to be the motor itself. The, like I explained, the F-Zone, for example, the motor that comes with the F-Zone, the old F-Zone, is about a $60, $69 motor. The motor that comes with the, or pump, should I say that, the pump that comes with the new F-Zone is a $170 pump motor to that pump and motor. And that's the way it is. $170, that can buy you a whole 2217 Eheim filter for that much money, for just one pump. So I'm going to go into the different pumps. I'm going to go into the different impellers, and then I'm going to try to explain to you on this chart here, uh, much like I would if I was in a classroom, exactly what we got. So you understand when you go out and buy a filter, Okay, and you're going to go buy your first canister filter. Think about what you're buying, what you're going to get out from your money, and what kind of performance are you going to get for your money. So the first thing is, let me move this out of the way. The first thing I'm going to get into, which most heads have, and believe it or not, is an impeller that looks like this. This is a cheap, inexpensive, three-blade impeller. And what this is called is an open impeller. And that is the cheapest, most inexpensive impeller you can possibly make. They make it in three blade, and they'll, you'll see it in five blade. Um, believe it or not, even in the Eheim, they'll have a three blade impeller. And it, this is an open impeller. It is the cheapest way to go of making a motor. It is the least efficient of all impellers. And, uh, by increasing the blade numbers, you will increase the amount of flow. 
So in other words, the losses decrease by increasing the blade numbers due to the reduction of secondary flow for a certain limit. And that's exactly what you're doing. As you increase the blades, you decrease the losses. So whenever you see an impeller that has three blades or five blades, the, the five blade will be better, the three blade is the worst. It is the cheapest route to go. And that's why manufacturers do it, because then inside of this motor here is stators, and the stators cost money, and then you'll have to go with a different kind of magnet, and this will depend on what kind of flow are you looking for. Because it seems like they want to make the flows and exaggerate with the flows because you'll buy it. You'll buy the pump. Now, let's take this next pump I have here. I already have it open. This is a little different. We pull this apart and look at the blades on here. The blades have a pitch to them. It's still considered to be an open impeller, okay? But what the manufacturer has done is made the impeller so it is very, very close to the wall here. Now, why isn't our, the manufacturers that manufacture um, heads for our filters, whether it be Eheim, Fluval, why aren't they making at least impellers like this with a pitch? Now, less pitch means more RPMs. More pitch means less RPMs. So when you have a straight impeller with no pitch, you're going to need more RPMs to put out a flow of water. When you pitch the blades like this, you need less RPMs, that means it can go slower to produce the same amount of output. But once you start adding blades on it, which of course adds resistance, you start adding more output. So when we look at a pump like this, which is a very small pump, look at the size of this pump. Look how small it is. A very small pump like this puts out a maximum of 1,500 liters at 12-volt um, DC, 1,500 liters. And the reason it's able to put out 1,500 liters is not only the size of the intake and outtake, but also because... Look at the size of the magnet. This is as big as uh, Eheim magnet, magnets or Fluval magnets. But look at the body of the pump, how small it is. And the reason they can get by with such a small little motor is because of the way they pitch the blades. And the blades are very close to these two surfaces, which is almost acting like a closed impeller. So that's what they're trying to do by save money without adding more plastic to the outer face and inner face without going through all that trouble. They just made it so the housing itself, the impeller is very close to the housing here and very close to this back wall here. This is going to kind of act like then a closed impeller to give you more output for such a small, tiny motor. Now, of course, this all makes us think, if this can put out 1,500 liters, why isn't it we can't find motors like this inside our canister filter heads? But then again, this motor is a whole separate motor and, it, and that is where most of the expense is. Another way of 
achieving something. You have this very expensive, this is very common for large motors, very common, is to make an impeller like this with the veins on it. And this here is called a semi-open impeller. And the reason it's called a semi-open impeller is because it has this back plate connected onto the blades. You you can see this in, um, oh, you'll see it maybe in uh, leaf blowers and stuff like that. You'll see something like this. These are very efficient, even though it has five blades, but look at the bent of the blade, the pitch of the blade. More pitch means less RPMs. So the more you pitch that blade, the less RPMs this has to spin to put out a certain amount of output water. This is a very big motor to put out. And this motor only puts out, I think it was like 475 gallons an hour, something like that, this motor puts out for such a big, expensive motor. Now I want to show you the best impeller that you can buy. This is called a closed impeller. Yeah, excuse me. Sorry about that, everybody. I got a brand new camera here, so I hope the film comes out better. This is I usually call this like a turbine impeller. This is called a closed impeller. Now this impeller that you see right here is the same kind of design that they use in the F-Zone filters, whether you have the old filter or whether you bought the brand new filter. This is the most efficient impeller you can have. And the point of it is, is liquid is supposed to flow the path down here and be expelled out. Well, this motor is to a uh, dust buster, Black & Decker dust buster, and you'll see this motor more commonly used in vacuum cleaners, dust busters, and everything else because this is the most efficient form of impeller. Now you kind of think, well, if this is the most efficient form of impeller, you can stick it this way, you can stick it this way. Why is it that our canister filters do not use an impeller like this? Well, cost more money. It costs more money to design an impeller like this and to design the correct housing so this would work correctly. And imagine this is going to be upside down because it's going to be pulling water through the canister into here. So what they're doing is they're cheaping out because that's the most expensive part of the filter is the motor. And they're giving you the cheapest rot gut impeller that they can design for your motor to pass water through the filter. The next thing of it is, is the efficiency of the head to your canister filter, how efficient is it at expelling air that may get into the canister? Now, I know there was a manufacturer who just redesigned their head because they had a problem with their canister filter sucking in air, and um, it wasn't expelling the air very good. What was happening, it was frappeing the bubbles, and the, you can constantly hear it, and it will sound much like sand in the head. It will constantly, you'll hear bubbles being stirred around because it can't release the air that's stuck in the head. So they had to redesign the head so it was a, can efficiently expel any bubbles that come into the canister filter out of the head and back into the aquarium. If things are designed correctly, all impellers and heads or motors should expel any air that comes into them very efficiently and send them out back into the aquarium. However, this manufacturer, who's a well-known manufacturer, makes some very expensive uh, 
canister filters. And by the way, it is not Fluvo and it is not Ehi. Okay, it's one of the other brands. Um, it's not Sun Sun either. But uh, it was one of the other brands that found out that they did not design their heads right and did not expel the bubbles going in. Okay. So I say when the air comes in, it will frappe it if the head or what you would call the uh, <clears throat> impeller cover, which would be this right here is the impeller cover. If this is not designed absolutely correctly for an impeller like this, it won't work efficiently. Okay, it will work, but not as efficient. And what happens when you have a impeller that keeps, can't release the air getting inside the canister, inside the head? A lot of people will say, well, that's cavitation. Well, that's a misnomer on the definition of cavitation is usually going to be with very high, high speed pumps and impellers. So that would take a very strong one horsepower, five horsepower motor to cause cavitation. With our little bitty filters, cavitation, no. It, our, our pumps are not strong enough to cause cavitation inside the head of a canister filter because they are made so inexpensively and cheaply without using this turbine impeller, as you see here. They don't use it, and therefore, to really get cavitation, you need a very strong motor with a lot of torque, and this thing has to be spinning very, very fast, and through heat and dispersion, it will create bubbles that can cause cavitation and actually destroy your impeller actually eat it up. We don't really have to worry about cavitation because of the fact the pumps and stuff they use are not strong enough to cause it. What happens is air is getting in here to your head some way, somehow. It's not through cavitation where the air is being, the, the water is being heated up and causing the oxygen bubbles to form. That's how cavitation is going to happen. This is this is not strong enough motors to do cavitation. You could probably get cavitation maybe from a motor like this, but you're not going to get cavitation from your motors that are on your uh, canister filter. No, it's, it's not going to happen. I always call it frappeing the bubbles because what it does if it's misdesigned, it will just keep spinning the bubbles around, much like that of a needle valve that's used in protein skimmer, where it will take the bubbles that are coming in and beat them up so bad, it will micro-bubble those bubbles, and they get caught in here in your head and just keep spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. It can't spit it out efficiently. So that's what's happening. You have to have air coming in. We, we, we can't. You're not going to be making cavitation because you just don't have the torque, you don't have the horsepower or anything else to cause that to happen in our little bitty canister filters, okay? You need a very strong motor to cause that. So let's get that straight. So what I've done here is this impeller, what you see here, if it's designed correctly, will suck in the water, literally. And they will, what you're trying to do is when you have a vacuum cleaner, you're making a tunnel. So the air has to be sucked in here. There's very little clearance between how the design is between this and the wall. So to make sure that it's sucked in, if you look at a, a an auric vacuum, they have the design of the cover or housing for the impeller with the curve on it. Okay, they have it designed that way. This one did not. So the air comes in and gets sucked in, literally sucked in and blown out. This That's why this is the most efficient, because it's literally sucking. In other words, it's causing a vacuum. That's why these impellers are the best, even better than this pump here, because this will not cause the same kind of vacuum 
an efficient vacuum as a design like this. So, Epson has decided to play on that, and I have here the Epson cover, impeller cover, if you can see this. Now, this is the old Epson pump, and the water will come in, and there's a big gap between the opening of where you would connect your hoses to, and between that and the closed impeller. That's too much of a gap, and what happens is when air comes in, it gets bounced around into the cover constantly. It frappes all those bubbles before it tries to spit them out. In fact, it can get so bad that it can become airlocked, and this can fill up with air. And that's what I meant in one of my videos saying heads to canister filters and motors can become airlocked if they're not designed correctly. This is the old style pump. I will show in this video how to fix this so it will expel air and actually make it more efficient. So you'll get a few gallons per hour out of the pump only because this is the way Epson's old motor was. If we look at the picture here, this is the new way that the F-Zone motor is. That's the blue motor that's on the new F-Zones. And what they did is corrected this problem. What they did is made a tunnel. And you'll see a little bit of clearance between here and the closed impeller. And what it does is liquid follows this path of the tunnel. It can't really go outside the tunnel. It's acting as a vacuum. So if you get air in here or anything else, it's going to be sucked in like a vacuum cleaner. Then it gets expelled out of the turbines that are here, which I think there could be like almost 12 turbines in that motor. And this is the most efficient form of making impellers. We're probably in the future going to see more and more motors being made this way because it is more efficient and it will cause more of a suction into the housing and expel it out. So, but right now, I think we're just kind of in its infancy because manufacturers are making basically impellers that look like this in most of your pumps that are separate. This is what they're doing. They're getting away from the straight blades. The better manufacturers are getting away from the open impellers that may have three blades or five blades. But that is going to take a while because that's money. And since the head is the most money they're going to spend, they're not going to change as long as you're selling. There's also another thing that all hobbies have to understand. You demand the change that manufacturers will make. If you demand you want a more efficient motor, then you're going to go with the motors that have the blades on them, whether they have three blades or five blades, like this, because it is the most efficient, and you can get, what, maybe, oh, anywhere between five watts, seven or eight watts of power to run something like this, okay, whether it has the three blade or the five blade. Uh, if it has a five blade and let's say it uses eight watts of power versus five watts of power for a three blade, you're going to get more output. Okay. However, when you start getting into the fancier closed impellers, like you're seeing here and here, you're going to need more use more electricity. That's all there is to it. It's the laws of physics. You have more resistance, and therefore, according to the law of physics, you are going to have to have more horsepower behind that to make this blow out water because you just have more mass to move. That's why they're staying away from it. You, the hobbyists, are dictating to the manufacturers that you want very, very efficient motors, but you want them to do the world of pumping. 
And it's just not going to happen because the laws of physics are against you. If you want an impeller or you want a motor to put out a lot of water, you're going to have to start getting into DC motors. They're going to have to start using more electricity. Uh, AC motors are going to have to start using more. Let's see the, the amount of current that they're going to use. Like, for example, this motor here, what does it say? It uses 40 to 50 watts of electricity. So a lot of, for the Awaki pump, a lot of people say, oh, that's a lot of electricity. I don't want my electric bill to go up. Well, then you get the little three-blade impeller or you get the little five-blade impeller and you're not going to get the output of your canister filter like you want because you're demanding something that the laws of physics, they can't beat. This, this motor here is designed to go very, very, very fast. It has very little resistance. That's what makes it suck in the air and therefore, that's why it's called a vacuum, because it sucks in so much air, because that thing is probably putting out about 3,000, 4,000 RPM. When you deal with water, you're dealing with a lot of resistance. So this is what is the best way of doing things, but you can do tricks with this, because if you look at the F-Zone pumps, they're very small pumps. But it's the way they've been designed with the laminations, the windings, the quality of the laminations to give it as much torque as they can to put out 8,000 liters per hour. So this is the old one, and I'm going to show you how to take the old one and turn it into what is called a semi-open impeller because this is a closed impeller, but this one and the old pump. So if you have the old one, I'm going to have a disclaimer right now, though. Disclaimer is you do this at your own risk to modify this impeller. You can modify it. You can make it more efficient. You can make it so it will pump more, and you can make it so it will expel air very efficiently that gets into the head. Except the disclaimer is, you do it on your own. If you're super clumsy, if you're not sure what you're doing, don't do the modification. Because I'm going to show you how to turn this into this impeller. This one will efficiently blow air out. And you'll even see when it blows the air out that the, you'll have big air bubbles coming out of it versus this one, as I drew with micro bubbles. And that's exactly what you're going to get with this, with the way... The old motor has been designed. I'm going to show you how to fix the old motor so you don't have to go out and buy a $170 new motor if you have the F zone and your motor's working just fine. Like I said, though, I'll show you how to do it, but it's at your own risk on doing the modification. So we're going to get into that next. Okay, if you made it this far into the video, then you're interested in how to modify this pump. This is the F-Zone pump to the old F-Zone of what they used to give you. The new pump is basically the same size. It's blue. The <clears throat> cap here is blue. But you just unscrew this, and the pump comes apart. Now, you can see the way. I don't know if you can see that very good. Yeah, you can see inside there. Uh, it's just the well. They have a little bit of a lip, a little bit. I don't know if you could see that or not very good. That little, they have a little bit of a lip, but not enough. Unfortunately, there's too much of a gap between the lip, this is the tunnel, and here. And looks similar, doesn't it? So um, it gives you an idea that they're trying to make a high-efficiency pump. Well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've got seven veins on it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to show you is 
that comes apart. Everything comes apart so you can clean it. It's a very quiet, cool running pump. Look at it. That's, that's it to the motor. And, uh, it's efficient and it's a DC so you can turn it on. But for those people who have already bought the old style and have this old style here, um, there is a way you can modify it and we're going to see if it, if it makes it better. I've already done it to one of these pumps and I think it made an improvement on its output and expelling air. It, it definitely 100% on expelling air, and we'll see uh, on its output. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to do is remove the cap that was once on the closed impeller to a semi-open impeller. And, uh, you know, all this is is really they just glued it on. And uh, it's really not that tough to break away. As you can see, use the snips and sandpaper. Now, I sanded it and everything. The reason is, is you want to make these impellers here, the blades, smooth. Okay, you don't want them to have ridges. You want them to be nice and smooth so the water moves nice and smooth across the blades and out of the cover. Now, when this goes on onto the cover, it, it's hard to see in there, but there's a big gap between the impeller and here. And that's not the way it's supposed to be designed. That's not the way this is supposed to be designed, this cover. This is supposed to have a piece coming out further. And it's supposed to come very, very close to the face of this or even wrap around the face a little bit of the impeller. So the, if it comes out and wraps around the face of here, then it will have a pulling effect like a vacuum. But they didn't design this quite 100% right. That's probably why the pump only costs 60 or $69. This isn't quite right. You don't have to do anything to this. But now when this goes on, there is a big gap between the impeller and the face of here. And this is not long enough. There's where the downfall of the efficiency of this impeller comes in. Now, you have a multi-blade impeller. You've just taken off some of the resistance off the impeller, so it will spin faster. Remember, all this causes resistance and weight, yet you may not think, well, this is very heavy, but yes, it does cause resistance, and it does cause weight on the whole impeller. So bubbles and canister filter starts frappeing the bubbles inside of here. And once I did this, that ended that. Then you can see it blow out the bubbles, big bubbles, small bubbles. It doesn't frappe it to micro bubbles. And it blows it out right away, and the pump keeps running. And I notice no reduction in output, where if it had the cap still on and ran, this thing can start getting full of air, and I notice a reduction in output. So let me get this thing together, and then we're going to test it on, does the output look better than 
what you saw in the very beginning of the video. Okay, if you made it this far into the video, then you're interested in the canister filter, the Epson canister filter. This is the old style pump. And I wanted to take a picture of the outflow so you can get some idea. Does it look like it increases or decreases the outflow? And um, <clears throat> for those of you who have made it this far, of course, I'm going to assume that you're interested in seeing how the pump can be modified. So we'll get into that next. Okay, so everything's hooked up. It uh, filled itself up. And... This is the output now with the modified pump. Nothing's leaking. The only thing I have left is to date the canister of when I changed everything, but this is what it looks like. Like you said, the hosing here I have not changed, and this is what it looks like at 100% output. So I guess you could be the judge of uh, do you think it's better now, or was it better before I modified the pump? This was the uh, button, lemon fern. You buy this at all your you know hardware stores and everything but that's it for this video I hope uh, I hope you liked that is it is it worth you doing the modification as I will say don't do the modification if you're not sure what you're doing and if you feel it's it's not justified then don't do it okay it's an easy modification to do set up the canister but uh, definitely don't do it if you feel uncomfortable and I'm going to tell you that right now. But this is the output of it now compared to what it was. You be the judge whether it's worth doing or if you're having an air lock problem where some of the air is being locked into the canister. But uh, yeah, I think it's better. Myself, I think it's better. It's well worth the time and trouble even though I didn't have any air problems with this, but when I started up the canister, immediately it expelled all the air out of the canister with no problems, without having any of the air uh, in the head where you have to shake the canister. I haven't even done any shaking of the canister, and it just expelled the air and started pumping. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.